I still spring out of bed on days like today, and I just can't wait to get to the rehearsal room. I, I don't quite get it, um, but I'm still as, at least as enthusiastic as I ever was. Three, four, five, and uh, one. I remember walking into a rehearsal and feeling absolutely spellbound by the energy he was giving to the young musicians in front of him. And here we are, sort of a good 20 years on, and that energy is relentless. That's always one of the best things for a conductor, is to be able to get the rest of the orchestra ready and motivated and prepared for the day. He makes rehearsals just much brighter. He combines that sort of very precise understanding of how, exactly how everything should be effortlessly to us and tells us exactly what we need to do. He understands exactly what, how each piece is meant to go and what's needed for it to be the best that it can be for the performance. He's quite critical, which I think is good because it makes me a better player. One and two. See? Garbage. Now come on. How on earth could you miss that? What's wrong, Horns? Who's playing it, Barney? Hamish. Well, get a grip. Here we go, come on. Oh, one, two, three. We were sitting there, you know, struggling for a little passage, and rather than kind of bullying us into playing, he gives you that bit of confidence, so when it comes to the concert, you're, you're so prepared and you're so chilled out, so. These are human beings playing this music, and Philip has a wonderful way of connecting with these musicians on a very human level. Now, you just gotta have people in the aisles grooving, okay? Just, you know. They're back in the 50s with their grandparents. People my age, okay? A one, two, three. He works them hard, but they always leave with a smile on their face and a spring in their step. Come on, Ed, groove on. Here we go. Ed, on the face. Oh, one, two, three. His rehearsal's always really intense. No, no, gap. no gap, no gap, and go. He knows the score inside out, and it really shows in the rehearsal. It, yes. really, it really helps us. Yes, did you hear what you did? You really played through that crotchet. And that was changed the color and the idea of the music altogether, didn't it? Did you hear that, Tom? Well, do it again. Here we go. And he also, he also adds a bit of humor every now and then. He's hat stand, but he's a fantastic conductor. Ooh. Oh, I'd heard that he, he's quite a character. Do that, do do day, do day, do day. Relentless. Screaming bar numbers. Pop, pop. Clapping out rhythms. Ah. He insults the, 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 I don't know, the horns or something. Horns, horns, you should be shot. This is so unrhythmic. In a quite a funny way, which is, which is always good. Tom, wonderful that you can play like that. Just scale it back, okay? to something on a human scale, okay? Just invents these little ideas of, for example, like bopping. 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 Come on, flutes, bop it now. One, two. And we use vocalized syllables, bop, 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 bop. Rubbish, second bar. You can actually represent all of the music in bopping. Trumpets, please, now. It dynamics, how loud and soft it is. Okay, now it's, it's messy. It's only four of you, but it's, it's not tight. Phrasing. That's it. Articulation. Now bop it together. Ready? One, two. Staccato, short, long. And of course, rhythm patterns. Okay, let's put it together and see if it absolutely locks in. And then when you go back to the instruments, guaranteeably, it's better. He shows a whole DVD about the assassination of John F. Kennedy because that's what one of our pieces is about. He just brings the music to life and he puts it in context so we really understand it. I, I like to think this is the moment, really, that is the moment of the assassination. And you've just got to go nuts. You remember that film where everyone was running everywhere? It was just crazy. It was absolutely nuts. All right, here we go. Come on, guys, go nuts. Ready? Ah. <laughs> It's just brilliant to be able to pick the music apart, to go, for it to be that exact, it's brilliant. We need the rhythm, we need everything, we need the colours, but we don't need the volume. Why? Because this isn't the end of the piece. We need that kind of intensity at the end of the piece, not here. Here we go. Cool. All right. Genuine national catastrophe. It's got to sound catastrophic, and it, in the nicest sense. And if it if it if it's all too loud, it'll sound like a wind band that's playing too loudly. 
which is the last thing we want. We've had uh, music on the stand, which, um, which was terrifying for them when they started. Terrifying. And they, they knew they couldn't do it. Emily, you can play louder than that, can't you? Of course you can. And you can play it. You can really play it well. So let's go for it. Here we go. One. And a week later, they can do it. And they're completely thrilled with themselves. Well, you've worked a miracle in the week we've had. A miracle, literally. You couldn't play that, even begin to. So well done. Which is one of the biggest buzzes I get out of, of teaching, seeing that kind of a, achievement beyond their wildest expectation. He didn't inspire us to be even better than we thought. I didn't really know the music it was that amazing, but I've just realised now it's, it's, it's so cool. This really helped my understanding of playing with bands of this type and just really helped me become more musical and play better. He just gets the best out of everybody. He gets a sound out of us that we, we never had at the beginning. At the beginning we were a group of 40 or 50 musicians, and now we're just one. Ensemble. He's an extraordinary man, an absolutely remarkable musician, and a wonderful educator. He's the sort of person that you, any orchestra would want on their podium in front of them.